Hey guys, so I want to uh, clarify something here really quick, if I may. In my last video, I talked about going to the uh, Noble Records fifth anniversary, and um, I talked about how crowded it was around the bins and how there was um, there was a uh, a kid kid that got up in my space and I I had to and I physically moved him, much to even my own surprise, um, but um, I, I think I got the um, the impression in the comments that some of you thought that I was talking about like a kid, like a, you know, like a, like, like a 10 or 12 year old kid. No, I mean, I think this guy, it was like a guy, like a kid, like a, a young man, if you will, probably old enough to vote, I would assume. So no, I'm not, taking little kids and shoving them out of the way. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not that, um, grumpy old man yet. We'll see. We'll see. What are we here for? We're here to talk about uh, some more new releases of 2024. This is kind of like an update. I've been doing these you know, uh, quarterly updates. We're going to call this kind of the third quarter summary. Uh, I can't even guarantee that all these records came out in the third quarter of the year, but uh, there were at least ones that I attained in the third quarter of the year. So why do I, why do I feel like I have to explain everything? Who, who cares? Let's just, let's just move on. First record that I'm going to talk about is uh, The Fear of Standing Still by American Aquarium. American Aquarium, uh, Americana country band, uh, country rock band, uh, out of one of those bands with twang, you know, um, out of the Raleigh, North Carolina area, uh, frontman BJ Barham, principal singer songwriter uh, of this group. Uh, been a fan for well over a decade now, uh, probably actually closer to 15 years or so. This is their latest album, and I'm a big fan of it. It's produced by Shooter Jennings. Uh, he has produced previous American Aquarium records, um, the more recent ones. And uh, I have to say, I feel like even, even the production uh, choices, um, far better on this record than some of the previous stuff that I've heard. Uh, the, the opener, uh, Crier, is fantastic. Uh, the second song, Messy as a Magnolia. Third song, Cherokee Purples. All three of those, fantastic songs. It starts really, really strong. I'd say that my favorite song, though, on this record is Southern Roots. Some of us kind of grew up feeling a little different in, in the South, you know, than the other people that we were surrounded by. And um, this is a song that's kind of like a theme for people like me. It's a, it's a fantastic song. It's kind of, it, the Southern Roots is really what it's saying is reclaiming Southern Roots and making it something else. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really poignant song. One of his best songs, in my opinion. This came on a Magnolia Bloom variant. Really, really strong record. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, uh, cause I've, I really, like I said, I've been a fan of this band for a long time and uh, really, really happy with this new one. So yeah, Fear Standing Still by American Aquarium. This next album, we're going to stay in North Carolina. We're going to talk about Stuart McLam's latest recording project, Fancy Gap. Now, Stuart McLam uh, is the front man, singer songwriter of the band The Love Language, which is a, um, a Raleigh Triangle area band uh, that 
put out a lot of really great albums from around 2009 to 2018 or right before the pandemic. I believe he moved out to California and then during the pandemic, I think, came back to um, the, the Carolinas. He and this guy right here, Charles Crossingham, holed up in uh, Fancy Gap, Virginia. Charles Crossingham had a cabin up there and they started writing songs together and uh, recording. And this album really kind of took me by surprise. Sounds nothing like The Love Language. This has more of like a almost 1990s alternative radio sound. It really took me back to when I was a teenager and songs that kind of like remind me of bands that aren't so cool, <laughs> you know, that aren't considered so cool, like Counting Crows, Wallflowers, maybe a little bit of like the Gin Blossoms, a little bit like, you know, 90s Cracker. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting record. It has a huge sound to it, especially to be the project of like two guys that also just aren't uh, really like, that aren't major label artists. It sounds like a major label record, but the songwriting is so good. And Stuart McLam's vocals are really like a, a strong sense. He's, he's really like an excellent singer, always kind of been low key, kind of like one of my favorite vocalists of the last, you know, 20 years or so. Uh, Rami Jaffe, speaking of the Wallflowers, plays uh, Hammond B and uh, electric piano on it, Sharon Van Etten guest vocals, uh, Adam Lazara from Taking Back Sunday. I've never really been a fan of that band, but he lends uh, vocals to this record. Pop forward, radio friendly kind of rock record that just takes you back. I miss the lies you tell me. keep working segues in here guys so the love language was signed to merge records and uh this next band this is their merge records debut one of my favorite newish bands i would say over the last you know six years or so and that's quivers and this is their third full length oyster cuts uh their debut full length i was a big fan of uh, came out in 2018 uh, their last record, I believe, came out in 2021, Golden Doubt. That was probably my favorite record of 2021. And uh, this one is excellent as well. I think of them more almost as like a band of like the new pornographers that really explores like all of these kind of like indie rock and power pop and jangle pop like subgenres you know just mulling around in whatever they choose to mull around in but but has like all of these references that we can kind of understand these kind of musical references that might click with us you know based on our taste the biggest leap forward that they took on their last album was that they introduced the vocals of um holly thomas and bella quinlan Sam Nicholson is the main singer-songwriter of the band. And so there's shared vocals amongst three people. Do I like this album as much as their last record? Probably not. I don't think the songs are as strong, but it's still outstanding and uh, definitely cements uh, their standing as one of my, my favorite, you know, newish bands, you know, of the, of the last decade. Yeah, Quivers, Oyster Cuts on Merge Records. Now for something completely different. Uh, this is the latest album by 
and I really should have, I, I normally try and research names before I say them if I can't, if I don't know how to pronounce them and I, I just forgot to do it before this video. So um, I believe it's Nala Sinefro and this album is called Endlessness. This is her second, I believe, full length record. It's on Warp. This is the first one that I am aware of. I, I missed her last album completely went past me and uh, I'm going to, so I'm going to go back and revisit that one because this one is absolutely amazing. Easily top five record of the year for me might even be a top three record. It's got every, it's got all of the elements of jazz music that have really kind of like reinvigorated my interest in it. So she does play harp, synthesizer. So of course, you're gonna draw some obvious connections to Alice Coltrane, Dorothy Ashby. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of spiritual elements to it. It also at times sounds like an electronic record. So it's very welcome on a label like Warp. And if you haven't heard this, highly recommend checking it out. Uh, if you have been aware of her and were in from the first album, congratulations. Uh, I'm late to the game and I could care less. Uh, it's never too late, in my opinion. That's always been my motto. close it out with two more records probably the two two of the more talked about albums of of uh the third quarter of 2024 the first one being wild god by nick cave and the bad seeds i was really looking forward to this one had been reading a lot of press leading up to it saying that this was uh, going to be surprisingly nick cave's uplifting album uh, I even saw the words happy in some press material. Um, but guys, come on. We're talking about fucking Nick Cave. It's not going to be happy. It's not happy at all. <laughs> Are there moods that feel uplifting? Yes. Uh, it's kind of got some of that gospel influence in it. That Nick Cave has... Um, woven into his sound before in the past. Uh, in particular, it reminds me a lot of uh, moments of Avatar Blues, A Liar of Orpheus, which is actually probably like my favorite Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds record. And there are moments on this record that kind of take me back to that one. I will say right out of the gate, Song of the Lake and Wild God, those two songs actually have a very kind of different sound to them. Um, but then, of course, you have like Long Dark Night, which is almost everybody, the consensus is that that's kind of like the best record, <laughs> best song on this record. And it is an, an instant classic, Long Dark Night. That does have more of kind of like that classic Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds kind of sound that we're, that we're used to hearing. All in all, it's a really good record. It's not exactly what it was billed, to be. And so that was kind of the thing that I was like, wow, it would actually be really cool to get a really, really happy record out of Nick Cave. But come on, that's never going to happen. Wouldn't be surprised to see it on a lot of people's top 10 lists uh, for 2024. Wild God, Nick Cave, Bad Seeds. Man who took me to be from elsewhere. When I too inhabited the earthly sphere, leant down and struck me with his long trailing hair. Maybe a long, long night is coming down. Right, and then we're going to go back to North Carolina for this last one. This guy's been making a lot of noise, uh, very trendy, 
topic in the music world, especially the indie rock, alternative rock world. And of course, I'm talking about MJ Linderman, and this is his latest album, Manning Fireworks. Uh, this is the second time I've mentioned MJ Linderman this year because uh, he played on Waxahachie's new record, uh, duets on one of the better songs of this year with her. Here he's back with his band, The Wind, and it's very much his thing. It's very much an MJ Linderman thing. I was a little late to 2022's Boat Songs. It was one of those albums that I read about at the end of the year, even after I had kind of picked out like my favorite albums of 2022. And then I kept reading about that one on, on people's lists that were a little bit more under the radar lists. And I, I really got sucked into that record, um, listened to it a lot last year, over the course of last year. So much so that that album, his boat songs, actually really overshadowed the new Wednesday record. I have become such a big fan of boat songs that I, I was kind of curious to see what he would do with a new album. Would he evolve his sound? Would it be kind of more of the same, like a continuation, um, a part two, maybe? And I feel like that's kind of what you have here. The production qualities inched up a little bit more. Uh, still very raw, still at times very slacker sounding. To me, what I loved about Boat Songs so much was that pedal steel sound and the guitar crunch that kind of comes from the Crazy Horse sound, but also it just, it was the first kind of alt country, true kind of alt country sound <laughs> that reminded me of like 90s alt country that I'd heard in a long time. And that definitely exists on this record as well. I would say overall, it's a little bit more acoustic than Boat Songs. To me, at times, it sounds uh, much more sincere, overtly sincere than a lot of the songs on, on Boat Songs. But even those songs on the album Boat Songs are uh, can be slightly misleading. There's a, an overall sense of humor with him, right? Uh, a very sly kind of sarcastic wit also can really touch you, you know? And I feel like that that kind of thing is much more overt, especially with a song like Wristwatch, which is pretty popular and has been, been shared everywhere and he's been playing it on talk shows and stuff. Is this album as good as most people say it is? Yes, it is. It very much so is. Uh, yeah, Manning Fireworks, MJ Linderman, from Asheville, North Carolina. Think about donating to those people out there. of word throw up salad in this video. I have been listening to a lot of 2024 albums in general, even if I haven't bought physical copies. I've been amassing this list and if I listen to them at least once all the way through, I've given them a little bit of a score and I've compiled that list and I'm going to share it in the description. Check it out. Uh, curse me for some of these scores, these meaningless scores that I've given those albums, but whatever you want to do. Uh, really thinking about uh, the people in Florida. Uh, hurricane hasn't hit landfall yet as of the recording of this video, but I know that when it does, it's going to be nasty. So um, really keeping my friends uh, down there that live in Florida in mind. And uh, yeah, crazy times, guys crazy times. All right. Take care of yourselves. All right. Bye. Digital gramophone makes no sense. Mm -hmm.